what's up guys it's Kelly. welcome back to my channel and welcome to my november hopefuls video if you find yourself enjoying this then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up it really helps me out and if you're new here and would like to see more of me then please subscribe the term hopefuls is something that i've seen floating around instagram tiktok and to an extent youtube for probably about the last year and it's basically an alternative to the like rigorously structured tbr i I haven't really been making TBRs this year, I spoke about that in my goals video, and I don't know that it has worked for me. <laughs> I was trying to put a little less pressure on myself with reading and content this year, and it has swung completely in the opposite dire direction. We've, we've gone too low pressure, and I'm trying to like find the balance again. So I haven't been doing TBRs, but I miss just like telling you about the new books in my life, and the books that I want to read, and the books that I want to prioritise, and I just find that this is kind of a lower, like a lower commitment way to do that, like it's still something to kind of hold me accountable, but it doesn't have that same level of pressure attached to it as like I will be reading these books this month. So these are the books that I am going to be prioritising in November that I'm aiming to read, might not read some of them, that's okay. We're going to start off with the October carryovers. So we do have three books here that were on my October TBR that I am still planning to prioritise in November. So first up we have Belladonna by Adeline Grace. I'm currently reading this, I'm really, really, really enjoying it. Um, it's about a girl who can see and like talk to death. Death has kind of followed her around throughout her life and she goes to stay with new guardians because like everyone that has ever looked after her has like died <laughs> and something strange is happening at the manor that she goes to live at. I'm enjoying this so so much, it is so good, look at all my tabs, it's a great time, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I'm also still currently reading Unraveler by Frances Harding which is a like middle grade to I would say younger YA fantasy that is about curses and curse unraveling not curse breaking because it's not the same thing um i'm really really enjoying this it's incredibly atmospheric the writing is incredible the characters are great and i'm hoping to get this one finished this month as well and then this one i haven't started so there isn't like as much pressure on me to read it this month but i do want to read it as part of like a bigger project and that is babel by rf kuang so i'm hoping to prioritize this this month if i don't that's okay but yeah, I do want, there's a specific reason that I want to read this. Okay, onto the rest of my books. I got an ARC copy of The Cloisters by Katie Hayes from my Penguin Random House sales rep, and it is gorgeous. I mean, and all of the gold on the cover is going to be gold foil on the finished book. It comes with like a little tarot card. It came with an author letter. I mean, this has been described as like, the secret history but more accessible which i don't know how i feel about i am perfectly happy living in my pretentious dark academia shell like i don't i don't need more accessible but i think i'm gonna enjoy it nonetheless basically it is about this woman who starts working as an apprentice or as an assistant at the met like the met in new york um, and she gets assigned to the cloisters which is a real section of the met dedicated to gothic and renaissance art i think it is absolutely beautiful like just google the cloisters met it is gorgeous and she gets kind of drawn into this group of researchers who are very like enigmatic and interesting and have some very outlandish theories and then she finds a 15th my cat's just having a freak out don't mind him and then she finds a tarot deck from the 15th century and things start going wrong I am so excited to read this. I'm definitely on like a tarot thing at the moment. Like I want to draw a deck of tarot cards. I'm definitely like be finding myself drawn to like stories about tarot and just kind of learning more about it. S plus just like Dark Academia, art, the Met, like everything about this just screams me, which is <laughs> why like, okay. So the, the sales rep that actually like sells this book gave me the arc. But the other sales rep that works for Penguin was like, you have to told, had told me about it and was like, you have to read this book because I got the manuscript and immediately thought of you. Like it, it aligns so much with my personal brand that two separate people were like, you have to read this book. Then this was very kindly sent to me for review by the lovely folks over at Penguin Random House and it is With Fire in Their Blood by Kat Delacourt. So this is a kind of supernatural romance. I think it's historical. It's set in Castello and amongst the like shadowy world of the mafia 
it's warring families. I think it's gonna be kind of a Romeo and Juliet style story, but with magic. Like, I'm so here for it. I absolutely cannot wait to read this. It sounds exactly up my alley. So we follow a girl who moves into the city and is immediately drawn towards this group of three other presumably teens. I don't know, Lisa, Nico, and Christian. And she's immediately drawn to them, like it's drawn into their little circle, but she feels like she just can't trust anyone, like possibly even herself. And then she breaks Costello's most important rule, which is that when they inevitably apparently test your blood, you'd better be nothing more than human. So I don't know what she is, but oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It sounds absolutely fantastic. I love a supernatural romance to start. I love an Italian setting. Here for like the mafia stuff, just sounds absolutely glorious. Then we have a couple of books that were sent to me from Jonathan Ball for review. These are actually not sent to like Velvet Library, these are actually sent to me through work, because um, I work in the book industry, so these were actually sent to me to review for like my job rather than for my blog, but I am going to be reading them anyway, so most likely I will be reviewing them on my platforms as well, because I requested to review these books for work, because they were books that I knew that I would enjoy. So first up, we have one that comes with a caveat, because it's The Treehouse Library by Anna James. This is book five, I believe, in the Pages & Co series. Now, the problem here is that I have not read book four of the Pages and Co series, I read the first one to three, absolutely adored them, and then for some reason didn't read book four when it came out, and then saw this on the request mailer, and I was like, oh yes, like, I want to read that. Then it arrived, and I was like, I have not read the book that precedes this, so I need to actually read book four, which I think is The Book Smugglers, I want to say it's The Book Smugglers, I need to read that first, and then I can read this. But this is a series about book wanderers, so it is people who can wander into books and also can pull characters out of books. They've been on many adventures, there have been a lot of people threatening to destroy like the sanctity and the wonder of book wandering throughout. There have been people who've been seeking to break down the very nature of what stories are and the magic that they contain to take that magic for their own personal gain. So I don't 100% know where the story is going at this point because I haven't read the last book, but this book is absolutely fantastic. Like I can't recommend it enough if you were looking for a really, really fun, engaging middle grade. I highly recommend these for kids, but I also just recommend them for adults. Like I love the series so, so much and yeah, can't recommend enough. Next we have I Must Betray You by Rita Sepetis. I've never read anything by her, but I've just heard such incredible things about her writing. I don't actually know if I request, I don't remember if I requested this or not, but it arrived, so thanks. But yeah, this sounds super good. It seems like it's a dystopian kind of society. Everything is ruled, every like aspect of your life is dictated to you by the government. Everything that you do say, think is controlled by the state. And as a result, Christian, our protagonist, feels like he can't trust anyone, not his family, not his friends, not his girlfriend, because he, it's just how, how in a situation like that, how do you know who you can trust? Then the secret police start blackmailing him and he's faced with an impossible choice. He can either betray everyone that he loves or he can resist, he can resist the urge to give in to the blackmail, but by doing that, he will be risking all of their lives. It sounds like it's going to be very intriguing, it's going to ask a lot of hard questions, and I think it's going to be a fantastic read. Then we have the one that I might be the most excited about, which is Killjoy by Holly Jackson. I absolutely love the Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I was going to say the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, but I've only read book one. I know, it's shameful, I've only read book one so far. Um, however, this is a prequel to book one, so whether you are already a fan of the series or you are considering getting into the series, this is a great place to start. It is 135 pages, so it's super short, it's going to be a super quick read. Good Girl's Guide to Murder is so well written, it's so captivating, it's so much fun, and yeah, this is it before, so it's a great entry point into the series or just a great bit of extra information for existing fans on why Pip is the way that she is. This was written actually for World Book Day, I believe, um, but World Book Day books can be a bit tricky sometimes to get in the rest of the world. I know that it's like a bit, it's a, it's a UK thing, and sometimes it can be quite difficult to get the books in the rest of the world, so I think given like the love for this series, they decided to publish it as just like 
a, a normal novella um, which is now being sold worldwide. So we follow Pip who is our protagonist from the series. She's been invited to her friend's 1920s themed murder mystery party and she really is not that keen to go, like she's not not feeling it, not here for it. But she goes and when the game begins she actually starts herself like really getting into it, she's really leaning into the mystery aspect of things. But as the game continues she finds that this fictional murder that they're all investigating is not the only case playing on her mind. So The Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, just for like some background, in book one we follow Pip who is kind of an amateur sleuth, like she's very into like true crime and there's a cold case in her town of a girl that is presumed murdered and it is assumed that her boyfriend did it because a couple days after she went missing, presumed dead, he killed himself and everyone just assumed that he had done it and yeah. So the first book is her trying to solve that mystery to clear his name even in death because she's convinced that he didn't actually do it. So our Pip is a proper little investigator and I'm, I'm really excited to read this, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. The thing again just based off the first book that I think the series does so well is balancing like proper mystery elements. Like I felt really high stakes throughout that first book, I was genuinely concerned for pretty major characters like very often so I think it balance, it balances like proper high stakes where you are stressed for these characters you genuinely do believe that like bad things could happen with a really like light fun contemporary tone they're genuinely like laugh out loud funny so it walks the line of dealing with very serious things and really just like readable digestible outright humorous sometimes writing so well. Like Holly Jackson is a genius for that. And then lastly we have Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong which, okay full disclosure, I have not read These Violent Delights yet. I know, I know, I know. This as far as I can tell is a companion story so I think I might be getting like some spoilers. <laughs> Well, these Violent Delights, but that's okay. So where These Violent Delights was a Romeo and Juliet retelling, this one focuses on the oft maligned character of Rosaline, or Rosalind as she is in this. I am trying not to go into it knowing too much because I actually have something planned for this. I think given the new Rosaline film that's on Disney+, Plus, I think I'm going to read this and then watch the film and then do a video discussing my thoughts on both. So I'm quite excited for that, but I think I want to go into it not knowing like a huge amount about it. Basically what I know about Chloe Gong and this kind of series world thing that she's created is it's Romeo and Juliet retellings set in like 1920s, now 1930s Shanghai. And this I guess is a spin-off continuation of that and I'm very excited to read it. I have just heard the most phenomenal things about her and I'm very excited for this to be my entry point into her work. So those are my November hopefuls, let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books that I'm planning to prioritise this month that I'm hoping to get to, let me know if there are any that you think I should particularly be prioritising that you think I should be making sure that I read over some others. Let me know also what you're going to be reading in November, I'd love to know. If you did enjoy this then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. In the description you'll find links to all of my other social media, that's my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, my TikTok, um, as well as my coffee account, my Redbubble account and my Black Horse affiliate link and my script affiliate link if you'd like to support me using any of those. You'll also find a link to my website where you can read my blog and also hire me for any freelance things that you might need written, edited or designed or drawn or whatever, as well as a link to my art Instagram. I need a, I need a script, I need a script for the end of my videos. If there's any place on the internet that you would like to support or find me, you will find the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you all again very soon. Bye!